Hello everyone, and uh, today we're going to be talking about the Saka Rauka in uh, Europa Barbarorum 2. So this is definitely one of my favorite factions from both the original uh, Europa Barbarorum and EB2 uh, because um, at the beginning you're a total nomadic warlord, so You've got just your horde of cavalry, and you've got to overwhelm uh, your neighboring provinces. But then, as you uh, settle down, you get access to some very interesting uh, units. Uh, new cavalry, new infantry, even elephant units. And uh, I really like these guys, so let's, um, let's talk about them. So, of course, um, a lot of people seem to be unaware of who the Saka Rauka are. And, uh, of course, um, these guys are the Indo-Scythians. So they're, they're known as the Indo-Scythians. And um, the Saka Rauka are just basically one of those uh, tribes that were known as the Indo-Scythians. And um, basically, historically, uh, there were a lot of uh, Scythians, or they were called Saka in Persian, uh, Old Persian. There were a lot of uh, Scythians near the Tarim Basin here, you can see. Um, and, you know, they were a mixture of different peoples. So, Tocharians, um, Iranians, um, uh, other nomadic peoples. They, they were a mixture of different peoples. And the Saka Rauka were just one of the more successful ones. The Saka Rauka. Uh, Rauka, I believe it means nomadic. So these are the, the they were called the nomadic Scythians. And uh, the Saka Rauka were able to uh, take land in northern India and really establish a strong um, kingdom in northern India. And uh, that's basically the kind of progression you have in EB2. So you start out... Oh, oh and the other interesting thing is that uh, these Indo-Scythians, uh, they were pressured by the Ueji, uh, who were migrating from um, near, near Mongolia, I believe. They, the Ueji were under pressure from the um, Xiongnu and the... Um, Chinese Empire, I believe, at some point, and they were migrating this way towards where a lot of these Scythian tribes lived, and thus these uh, Scythians, including the Sakarauka, migrated down into Bactria. They took out the Bactrian uh, Greek kingdom, and then they uh, migrated further down into northern India, where they uh, took out a lot of the Indo-Greek Kingdom. So actually, Bactria is another very interesting faction that I, that I will be talking about later, uh, because of course the Bactrians have that sort of Indo-Greek progression where if they take these lands here, they basically get access to a lot of Indo-Greek units. And same thing with the Saka Rauka. Uh, you'll get access to a lot of Indo-Saka units or Indo-Scythian uh, units. So here's the deal. And, of course, as the Sakarauka, you also get access to Indo-Greek units that are very important for you. So uh, you start out with just this one province here. So in, um, in EB1, it's called Sai Yavuga. Um, but in uh, EB2, it's called uh, Sakastan. Uh, so, of course, uh, Sakastan, just the place of the Saka, the Scythians. Um... And Sai is actually the Chinese name of these uh, peoples that lived here, Sai. So it just means Scythian in any case. So it's the same thing. Um, but in any case, you start out again with this um, piece of land here in the very corner of the map. You're very far removed from the Mediterranean action. Uh, and you start out with a big deficit. So almost 4,000 gold uh, you'll be losing every turn. And you've just got a couple of uh, uh, archers, Scythian archers, uh, Saka Guhadur Nabara, right? 
And uh, these are good. These are good archers. They're actually uh, some of the best um, kind of low tier archers here because uh, they have very high missile attack. And uh, yeah, you won't find archers that good uh, in a lot of uh, other places like the Cappadocian archers are not not this good, I don't believe. Um, and you have a little army here and you have a family member and you have another family member and you have uh, your big horde um, led by your Saka leader, Shurase. And Murunde is the leader. That means the leader. So he's the leader of the Sakarauka. And um, so you've got a lot of very nice units here. It's an all cavalry force. You only have a couple of infantry guarding uh, your capital. And of course, you get free upkeep while garrisoned. But uh, of course, one thing that everyone knows about the Sakarauka in EB, from EB1. Uh, perhaps it might be the only thing a lot of players know, is that their general's bodyguards in EB1 are simply overpowered. Uh, they're just too good. Um, th they're basically cataphract archers, but uh, very good cataphract archers. So, um, and those uh, Sakarauka cataphract archers, the Hadabara in EB1, they're just overpowered. They will wipe people out with missiles, and then when they charge in, uh, they'll wipe out whoever's left. They were so good. Now in EB2, of course, uh, horse archers in general have been toned down quite a bit. So you can't just wipe out infantry armies, phalanx armies, as easily um, in EB2. It's a lot harder to do. Now, playing the Sakarauka is not that easy in EB1, uh, but um, in EB2, uh, you have the added issue of... Uh, in EB2, I would say your opponents are not quite as strong, but you're also weaker uh, due to your uh, weaker general's bodyguards. Now, that's not to say these guys aren't great, because uh, they are. Um, they're decent in melee. They're not great. Um, so you, uh, let me just show a couple of the other units here. Uh, so they're decent in melee, not great. Their defense and their attack is just okay. They're better than medium cavalry, so like they'll beat, um, Cappadocian medium, ca medium cavalry and, uh, units like that. But they have very high missile attack. They're very good horse archers. Uh, that's the main thing. Uh, you also have a lot of uh, regular Scythian or Saka horse archers in your uh, retinue here. And uh, their missile attack is not quite as good, but their melee is really not great. But uh, they're actually pretty good horse archers, all things considered. So I believe, for example, you compare these guys to the Armenian horse archers that we were... Um, that we saw in the Let's Play that I'm, I'm still doing, I just haven't had time recently. Um, these guys have seven missile attacks, so they're much more effective as horse archers. Okay, and I believe they're more effective in melee as well. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong there. But you also have these guys, uh, the Saka, basically the Saka medium cavalry. And um, they're pretty cheap uh, for what they give you. Um, now here's the thing, their defense is pretty comparable to a unit like the, um, Cappadocian medium cavalry, but, uh, these guys have worse attack. So you've got to use these guys, you've got to skirmish with this army, and you've got to run down enemies with these guys, and uh, use these guys for flanking purposes. So you've got to be careful. Uh, when you use these guys, uh, the Saka Ashvabara. Hmm? But they're good. They're very good. I like their armor too, this kind of square thing. Uh, but uh, you've just got to be careful because of their low attack. So don't um, keep them stuck in melee for too long. Um, these guys are really good. These are the Saka nobles. 
the Sakarauka Noble Cavalry. So you can see they've got uh, these nice uh, cool little antler designs on the horses. So uh, when I do a Let's Play as Sakarauka, which I want to do because I was really into it when I was testing this faction and I really enjoyed the Sakarauka campaign in EB1 as well. But uh, you can see uh, their attack, again, better than your uh, Saka medium cavalry. And uh, their, their charge is okay. Their missile attack is very good. Uh, they're very similar to your uh, general's bodyguards, but not quite as good. But they have more soldiers per unit um, on average. And uh, they have good charge bonus. So again, yeah, use these guys as strong horse archers and then charge in uh, to mop up. And you also get one unit of these guys. These guys are really nasty. They frighten enemies, they inspire nearby troops, and they have a very powerful charge. So th these are the Saka Cataphracts. Um, and uh, yeah, it's very cool that you get these guy get a unit of these guys at the beginning of the game. So these guys, if you charge them into the back of a phalanx or something, they will rout. That phalanx will rout. So these guys, um, you can use them definitely to take out enemy generals' bodyguards, like the Bactrian Somatophilakes Stratego, right? And um, they're good against the Bactrian generals' bodyguards, and uh, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Parthian ones as well. Uh, but yeah, as I said before, here's the... Um, General's bodyguards again. So the, again, comparable to the nobles, but they have higher attack. The Nadi Chara, they have higher t higher attack, and um, comparable defense, and uh, comparable charge. So these guys are very good. They're very good, but not the monsters they were in EB one. Uh, perhaps I'll do a video about the Saka Rauka in EB one as well, because. Uh, it's definitely a fun campaign and very. it plays very differently than this one. Uh, most camp uh, EB2 plays very differently in general. Uh, so yeah, that campaign plays differently too. So basically you start out, who are your neighbors? So to the west, you've got um, another nomad camp, uh, Saka, kind of Saka rebel province here, another tribe. And in the south, it's the same thing. You've got a Tarim Basin kingdom, uh, so probably a Tocharian kingdom, to your south here. A rebel or minor faction in EB2. Um, and to the southwest, you've got uh, Chach. Uh, so th this was the Kang kingdom, known as Kang. Um, and uh, these guys. Um, you know, in a lot of, in a lot of guides, or in a lot of uh, the experts, when they talk about the Sakarauka, um, they say to avoid this settlement because the Parthians seem to like to attack it. And of course, the Parthians are not that far away. So you've got, um, yeah, Bukharak up here. And you've got the Parthians at Nisa over here. So yeah, once the Parthians take this city up there, uh, they've got a border with uh, Kang province. So, um, yeah, then they like to take it. So they like to attack this province. Uh, so some people recommend not going for Chach early. So they recommend stabilizing your economy and your military uh, before going for it, before challenging the Parthians. And... Um, I, I agree with that tactic here. So actually your first army here is in a pretty good position to go for Chach. Um, but uh, you don't have to. You don't have to. It can wait. Uh, the Bactrians... The Bactrians have a couple of rebel settlements to their east here. Um, there's... Well, there's the Tarim Basin there, but there's also um, Halma Varga. So actually, Halma Varga is visible in EB1, but it's not in uh, EB2, to the Saka, that is. So the Halma Varga were a, um, another Saka tribe. And uh, uh, the first time we learn about the Saka tribe's 
near Central Asia here, or I guess in Central Asia, are in the Achaemenid royal inscriptions of uh, Darius I, Dare Awahu in Old Persian. And um, he talks about conquering in the last column, the very last part of the Behistun inscription. I suggest looking up the Behistun inscription. It's a one of my favorite artifacts and inscriptions of all time. Um, he talks about conquering the Saka Tigra Chauda. Tigra Chauda in Old Persian means uh, pointy hats. Tigra means pointy. So there's the Armenian name Tigran. It actually comes from that um, Old Persian term Tigra. Tigra Chauda. Chauda means hat in, um, in uh, Old Persian. So the Saka Tigra Chauda were another people who lived around here. And uh, they were the, the Saka, the pointy-hatted, the pointy-capped Scythians, right? So uh, Darius conquered one of those tribes here. And the Saka Halma Varga, the Halma Varga means, um, Halma was a plant, uh, Soma in Sanskrit, Halma in Old Persian, and Avestan. Avestan was even older Persian, spoken in Afghanistan uh, thousands of years ago older than Old Persian, and uh, Halma was a, a plant that they made some hal hallucinogenic hallucinogenic uh, drink out of, and um, so perhaps Halma Varga means the drinkers of Halma, or the boilers of Halma, or something like that. So you can actually build a Halma temple and have a good time, public order due to fun, right? Um, but they're down here. They have a lot of armies here. They have a couple of strong stacks here. I don't recommend going for... Uh, oh, sorry. I was thinking of EB1. In EB2, Haumavarga is a weaker province. Uh, so the Bactrians go for it. And the Bactrian army goes and takes Haumavarga. And that's a tough province for them to take because it's a nomadic province. And it's tough for the Bactrians to pacify without keeping a big garrison there. So, you know what, um, there is a, a big, extensive, a comprehensive guide to the early game for the Saka Rauka on um, Total War Center. And in that guide, um, the person, the poster recommends um, going straight for Bactra, the city of Bactra, the capital of Bactria. So Bactria has uh, th three provinces here, three home provinces. Uh, Sogdia, Marakanda, uh, Bactra, which is around here, and um, Oskobara, which is around here. So um, some people recommend going down here. There's a city right here, Alexandria Eschate, a very interesting town. It's the farthest Alexandria, Alexandria the farthest. That's literally its name. And uh, it's about here. And uh, you know what? I don't want to toggle the fog of war because I don't want to spoil it. Um, so I'm just going to tell you about it. But uh, uh, there's a, uh, Alexandria Escate here. And there, there, is a, there is an army here, an enemy army. But it's not that strong. So actually what I did personally, what I do personally, and what I found to be a pretty good strategy, is... Uh, Take your horde, don't go for Chach yet. Take your horde, consolidate your armies, go straight for um, Alexandria Escate. So actually there's a rebel army here to the south, but I found they don't go for your capital, they don't attack it. Um, but in any, even on hard, so I've played this campaign on hard a few times and they've never attacked. Uh, the capital. I've kept my archers there, perhaps that was the deterrent. Um, but in any case, consolidate your army, go for Alexandria Escate. That's this province right here. And uh, that province is called Scythia. And uh, once you take Alexandria Escate here, um, then you have oh, the, do the doors wide open to go for Bactra, the capital of Bactria, while uh, the main Bactrian armies are kind of trying to pacify Halmavarga here in the east. And um, 
I found that this is a very good strategy because it also leaves Marakanda and Sagdia, the Bactrian province, wide open um, because the Bactrians are busy. So you go in with your army, you take Alexandria, and then you take Bactra, and then you take Marakanda. And your horde is good enough to do all of that. So basically, once you besiege these towns like Alexandria, Alexandria in um, Alexandria is Kate in EB1 does not have walls, but it does have walls in EB2. Um, you know what? I'll, I'll just spoil it. Spoiler alert. I'm going to show this. Um, so uh, let, let me show the army to the south here. There, there is a rebel army somewhere here. Oh, there's also Kushi. Kucha. The, it was the kingdom of Kucha. Uh, you might have uh, heard of them from uh, uh, Imperator Rome. They're included there. But uh, yeah, these guys are definitely Tocharians. And this is the enemy rebel army there. But I found they don't they don't really go for the capital. Um, but I don't know. Maybe I've just been lucky. But in any case, uh, here is your uh, other neighbor. And here is Halma Varga. Um, again, not nearly as powerful as they are in uh, EB1, uh, these Halma Varga here. But uh, here's Alexandria, Escate. So, uh, oh, very cool building in Alexandria Escate. There are uh, Alexander's farthest altars. So uh, that's a nice wonder out here at the edge of the known world. So you can swoop down here, take Alexandria. I found that's a good strategy. And that kind of leaves Bactra wide open because um, the uh, Bactrian king, along with his army, and Diodotos too, they go uh, to take Hamavarga. So then you swoop down, you besiege Bactra, you don't have any infantry, so you cannot siege assault. But uh, it's okay, because they will have the um, numbers advantage, and they will sally out to attack you. And that's fine, um, because uh, as they're coming out of the gate, and as they're forming up, uh, you have a bunch of horse archers, you're just going to pelt them. Uh, you're going to pelt them and then um, uh, charge in, flank, uh, get their infantry all scattered, uh, charge their missile infantry. And uh, yeah, once you have Bactra, then you go for Marakanda, which is going to be isolated here. And then um, that's pretty much all she wrote for Bactria. So here's the thing. Once you take those uh, three settlements, Okay, the reason I decided to um, spoil this is because um, I figured if you're watching this video, then you want the lowdown on how to play as Sakarauka. And uh, this doesn't spoil the reforms part, which is um, one of the most fun parts of playing as the Sakarauka. But in any case, this gives you um, Alexandria, Marakanda, and Bactra. And once you have those settlements, um, you're going to be out of the red. So you can sack those settlements and um, in Alexandria as well. And uh, you'll be out of the red pretty quickly. So you'll be about maybe 20,000, 15,000 in debt, depending on how fast you do everything and how many troops you lose. If you lose a lot of troops, then uh, you'll be out of the red even faster. Um, and the other good thing is that you can retrain your cataphracts back here because um, you have access to a lot of uh, nice units recruitable up here. Yeah, you got the cataphracts, you've got your medium cavalry, you've got the noblemen, and you've got the horse archers as well. And uh, the javelineers, I don't like javcav in um, EB2. Uh, they're slightly better than the horse archers in melee, but in any case... Mm -hmm. But um, other than that, uh, once you take Bactra, Marakanda, and Alexandria, then you have access to, uh, well, first things first. In Alexandria and Marakanda, and Chach once you take it as well, uh, you can construct 
uh, your faction government. So um, there will be an option to uh, to construct. This is our land, or it's called our land, I think. And uh, that will lead you to the um, building chain for your faction government. But in Bactra, you won't have the ability to do that. So it's actually somewhat similar to EB1 in that respect, where in EB1, in Bactra, you only have access to an allied government. And you definitely want to go for allied government here in Bactra, and uh, then the allied oligarchy. And uh, once you make the allied, when you make the faction government, then you can construct, uh, then you can recruit um, uh, a lot of your best units. So the Saka riders, the, the medium cavalry, the cataphracts, uh, the nobles, once you go up that tree. But in Bactra, you'll be able to recruit a lot of very important units uh, for you, the Indo-Greek units. So you'll get access to um, uh, hoplites of various types, um, heavier infantry. So you'll actually be able to uh, do siege assaults. Uh, you'll be able to pin down um, enemy phalanxes better as well with the, with the Indo-Greek units you can recruit here. And uh, I mean, that's pretty accurate because there were Indo-Greek kings that um, uh, served their Scythian uh, overlords once the Scythians were able to um, beat them. And um, so that's a good thing. The other thing that's important is that uh, you have this kingdom here, Tax Taxila, Taxashila in uh, S Sanskrit, I believe. Um, so that's why it's Taxashila in um, EB2. And uh, Taxila is uh, very important uh, for you and also these other provinces too, these Indian provinces, because uh, they give you access to Indo-Saka units, Indo-Scythian units, including uh, cataphract elephants, heavy elephants, um, um, Indian infantry, so kind of very good offensive infantry. Um, and the Indo-Scythian units are just very fun. They're very fun in EB1, and they're very fun in EB2 as well. A little bit more fun in EB2, I would say, because um, in uh, EB1, you have a, a lot less movement, so it's harder to ferry your good infantry from uh, India and Bactria to the Western Front here. So um, in any case... Uh, yeah, those are, uh, those are, that, that's the historical expansion you want to go for. If you want the historical expansion, uh, you want to go down, you want to take Bactra and consolidate, uh, Bactria under your control. And again, once you take Alexandria, Maracanda, and Bactra, it's just a matter of time, uh, because you'll be able to, uh, get out of the red and, uh, finish off Bactria, which should be a shadow of its former self um, once it's down to these two provinces. Um, and then once you consolidate, you can go after the Seleucids, you can go after uh, Taxila and in India, and that would be the more historical route. And you can go after the Parthians as well. They, they did uh, go after the Parthians quite a bit. They killed um, the King Phraates I, I believe, as well as his successor, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in battle. So the the Saka were a menace for the Parthians. So that's historical to go after them as well. Um, but uh, definitely, I like the Indo-Saka units. But uh, the reforms in EB1 for the Saka Rauka are very easy. You take Alexandria, and then you wait maybe 13 or 14 turns, I can't recall. I think 13 turns. Uh, three years, so yeah, you wait 13 turns, three winters, and um, after that you get the reforms. So that gives you access to um, Indo-Saka units and things like that, and I believe the Indo-Greek ones as well. 
um, or maybe just the Indo-Saka ones. But in EB2, uh, the reforms process is a little more involved. So you have to settle, first of all. So uh, you can't settle with um, these provinces here, these provinces that have walls already. So Chach, um, Alexandria, Marakanda, Bactra, these won't help you. Uh, what you have to do is you have to take... Um, you have to take, uh, and again, thank you to um, the user uh, El Zeda from uh, TotalWar.org for his uh, Faction Reforms Guide. Um, I think some of the things might be out of date, but most of it is not, if I'm not mistaken. But um, in any case, uh, what you have to do is you have to take a bunch of uh, towns that are unwalled, so like um, uh, Nisa and these other uh, unwalled settlements, so uh, Homavarga and uh, this settlement as well. And I believe their names change once you take them. That's another thing I like about EB2 is the names change based on the faction that controls uh, the city, which is not like EB1. EB1 doesn't have that. Um, but in any case, you have to build walls in at least three of those settlements. So in three of those nomad camp settlements, uh, you have to build uh, walls. And then uh, once you do that, um, then you get then you have to get your faction leader uh, to govern. You have to get him to sit in one of those settlements. So uh, let's use Nisa as an example. You get your Saka governor to sit in one of those settlements, and he gets the settled trait. And then once your faction leader gets the settled trait, uh, and once you upgrade at least three of those towns, those nomad camps up to towns, then uh, your government upgrades from step nomadism. Uh, where is it here? So yeah, this uh, pastoral government, or, or the nomadic region and everything, it uh, upgrades from that to Eastern Tribal. So Eastern Tribal, again, is the uh, government that uh, Pontus has. It's the government that Parthia starts out with, I believe, and uh, Armenia, Hayastan, starts out with Eastern Tribal as well. And uh, so you upgrade from... Or not upgrade, you just change, to Eastern Tribal. Okay, so that's the settling part of the Saka reforms in EB2. So that gives you uh, better government options in uh, settled regions like Alexandria, Marakanda, Bactria, uh, Oscobara as well. And uh, that's very important, right? So once you, once you upgrade uh, your government buildings, you get access to way better um, troops, right? So that's definitely something you want to do. And uh, there's another tier of the reforms. And this is really unfortunate because in EB1, the reforms are kind of underwhelming. You just hold Alexandria for 13 turns and that's it. You've got them. But uh, in, in, they wanted to make the reforms deeper for the Saka Rauka, but they never got around to it. So in EB2, they did make them deeper. So then you have to get the Empire reforms. So you have to wait 40 turns. So 40 turns have to pass after uh, you settle, after you get the Eastern Tribal reform. And then uh, your faction leader needs to have an authority above four, or four and above. And you need to have at least eight settlements. That should be pretty easy. And you need to have four settlements with uh, medium farms. So the third tier of farms, I believe. Um, and uh, once, you, once you do that, and once 40 turns have passed, then uh, you get the Eastern Imperial Government. And that's really good because that will, again, allow you to upgrade 
uh, your government in a lot of uh, different areas, and it allows you to construct uh, native colonies, which again will allow you uh, give you access to better units, better buildings in a lot of these settled uh, territories and of uh, outlying territories that you take. Um, and then, of course, there is one more um, reform. Um, so as you get more territory, uh, your faction leader will get more authority, and then some event will trigger. Uh, this one I have not seen personally, so I'm just going off of the uh, guide from El Zeda here. And it says that um, this reform will trigger once your faction leader gets a whole bunch of authority and you get more territory. And uh, that will allow you to construct Royal Satrapy, the top government building for the Sakarauka. And uh, let's uh, toggle the fog of war again. And um, that will let you construct Royal Satrapy. And that'll be really great for your uh, Indo, for your Indian provinces, your Indo Saka provinces, and your Indo Greek provinces. Um, and the provinces that you take from the Seleucids and uh, Parthians as well. Uh, so, again, all of the reforms for the Saka are geared towards um, making it easier to pacify, easier to control. Your settled uh, the territories of uh, settled people that you conquered, and it the reforms basically reflect the progression of the Sakarauka from a nomadic to a settled uh, faction. Now uh, that's basically all the reforms they've got, and it's pretty involved, so it's not um, quite as guided as other reforms, like for Hayastan or Kainon Helenon, but um, it's pretty involved. It's a pretty involved process. Um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the Sakarauka. So here's the thing. It's listed as nigh impossible for a reason. It's a tough campaign. It's tough. It's tougher than uh, Hayastan. It's tougher than I'd say it's tougher than Pontus a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a tough campaign. And um, the other thing you'll have to face is uh, you'll get periodic rebellions in uh, Bactria and these territories here. Um, but it's okay. Like if you lose a settlement, you have to think like a nomad when you play as the Sakarauka. So if you lose a town... Like, whatever. You just grab your horde, and you go, and you take it again. And it's okay. It happened a lot. So the Indo-Scythians would take a province in India, let's say, and then they would get kicked out. And then they would come back. That happened a couple times, I believe. And you just have to think like a nomad. So it's okay to lose. It's okay to lose a territory. A lot of people rage quit. I don't know. I rage quit. But, you know... Playing as this, as the Sakarauka, it's not so bad to lose a settlement because you just go back with your horde, you take it back. So you take it easy. I don't know, I like the Sakarauka. The battles are um, a bit tough as the Sakarauka. You have to uh, micromanage because you're going to be facing uh, a lot of spearmen, a lot of... Uh, the Bactrians have uh, Semitic... Spearmen, the Regalen, uh, which are good against cavalry. They have uh, a lot of phalanx troops. Um, so your cavalry, they're going to run roughshod over the Bactrian um, light skirmishers and the Bactrian infantry, the Balkh infantry, the light infantry. Uh, javel their javelineers, your cavalry will run over them. Your cataphracts, your general's bodyguard, you, they will beat the Bactrian general's bodyguard, especially if you flank them, and uh, the Bactrians don't have as much cavalry as you, so you can definitely scatter their army and pick them off one by one. That's how you have to win against Bactria and the Seleucids as well. You have to um, 
scatter their infantry, and pick them off one by one until you get access to the better, heavier uh, Indo-Greek allied troops and the Indo-Scythian uh, heavier infantry. Once you get those guys, then you can do your standard hammer and anvil tactics. Uh, of course, with the added bonus of having the best cavalry and very cheap, nice cavalry as well, I have to say. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything I have to say about the Sakarauka. So this turned into a pretty long one. Uh, but um, as you can tell, I really like the Indo-Scythians and the Indo-Scythian uh, reform. So um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about Sakarauka. Uh, perhaps I'll do a Let's Play or a stream as them soon. Uh, maybe I'll talk about them in EB1 as well. I can do a shorter video because it's not... Uh, the reforms process is much easier in EB1. It's a little more straightforward. Um, but in any case, uh, yeah, I want people to get more interested in this faction because it's, it's a very interesting faction. The Tarim Basin kingdoms, uh, the Toharian kingdoms here, uh, Kucha and um, Dayuan and um, the Sakarauka and the Hauma Varga. Very interesting, uh, very interesting groups of people, and they made very interesting kingdoms as well. Uh, so yeah, I'll uh, see you guys in the next one. If you like this video, please uh, leave a like, subscribe. If you like content about the historical Total Wars, which uh, of course I do, and um, I'll see you guys in the next video.